Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoyed our prelude pieces as we gather together to celebrate God incarnate. Jesus Christ has come and was born this night. As we gather for worship today, uh, just a reminder that if you would like to follow along with the worship service, you'll find a link in the description for the service. And as we gather together, we celebrate in this time, despite the fact that we have to do it online, but Christ is still ever present with us. And so, let us begin with worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned down from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden in your abundant mercy. Forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, who made known to all people with all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Please sing with me number 267 in the ELW. <laughs> God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we walk in the light of Jesus' presence, in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of a deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden in the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken us on the day of Midian. 
for all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there, there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for the gods of nations, they are but idols. For you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence, power and splendor in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. Tell it among the nations, the Lord is king. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord, for you have come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. Our second reading is from Titus chapter 2. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare to hear the gospel lesson. The Gospel Acclamation is ELW number 172. According to Luke, the second chapter, glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had happened to them about this child, or what, and all heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is interesting to think about on Christmas that the first ones to hear about the birth of the Messiah, the birth of God incarnate, was not some high king or some great hero or some other force of power that was in the world, but instead it was to some lowly shepherds out in their fields by flocks. And in that experience, they were, they saw one of the greatest and amazing and awesome and terrifying scenes that they would ever see in their lives. Angels, beings of power coming to heaven with a message for them. A message of hope, a message of peace, a message of welcome. Yes, welcome. It is a message of welcome for those who are outcasts in society. This child was born to an outcast mother from an outcast family of an outcast people living out in the boonies of one of the greatest empires this world has ever known. This child, who is God incarnate, did not come to be among those who are powerful, but instead came to be a welcoming force to those who have never found a welcome place, to those who have never seen or had a friend to guide them and walk with them in this world. Jesus comes into this world as an outcast, and as we know the end of this story, dies an outcast. This is who Jesus calls blessed in this world. These are the ones that Jesus says are his children in the kingdom of God. And we are called as disciples of Christ to follow in that example of being welcoming and sharing in a good news that we do not create more outcasts with our words, but instead create for ourselves world places and opportunities in which the body of Christ can gather in ways that bring enemies together, brings hardships to peace, and finds harmony among the problems of this world. And while we cannot gather in this time, Christ still came to this world to be with us in ways that go beyond anything we can imagine. And so, as we celebrate this Christmas, know that the love of Christ continues to be with you and continues to go with you even to the darkest of places, even to the craziest of places, even to the most far-fetched places. Because as we are here, we are, God incarnate does not limit God's self to just our churches or our buildings, but instead meets us wherever we are. These outcasts, these shepherds had only one place really for themselves and it was out in these fields. And we are called as the body of Christ to go out into this world to understand that, the, that Christ is not someone who is held bound to one place but has come to be in and among the world. This is the beauty of the incarnation. That God does not remain in heaven, that God does not remain on some throne far away, that God is not some distant being who does not participate in the, this world, but instead actively wants to be a part of it. God incarnate, God Almighty, made a choice. And that choice, first of all, was to even come to this world. And that second choice was to be in this world as an outcast, someone who would be rejected, someone who would face death on a cross. This God chose to be among the outcasts so that whoever follows in his footsteps, those that would become the church, would see this world in terms of what God wants for it and not necessarily what our, the power of sin wants for it. For we call upon are, are we are called by God to be loving companions of all of this creation, to see power in weakness, to humble ourselves and see strength, to see that
that God Almighty came down to this world because of the love for this world and now gives us the responsibility to celebrate and give thanks for all that has been given to us. This is hymn number 282. Joining our voices with the Song of Angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those that are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of the world. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. The angels sing, bring peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of violence and places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. 
Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those w without homes. Counsel those who lie awake before due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. Especially we, we need those the those we name out silently or out loud. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Love sings through the sound of a baby's cry. Bless new parents and expected parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. The heavenly choir sing glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints you have proclaimed your glory to in word and deed. Let us join them in this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift those and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share signs of peace, and while you are doing that, take out some candles as we prepare for the candle hymn. You may stop this video at this time for just a little bit as you prepare and then rejoin us for Silent Night. And just a note, the first verse will be sung in German. Holy God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, at the time of your word brought light into the world and throughout the ages, you proclaim newness of life for your wondrous word. We thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. In the fullness of time, your word became flesh so to shine in our world's darkness to speak peace to all people and to welcome us as members of your family. For your loving word, we adore you, O God. We adore you, O God. Grant us now the gift of your spirit, 
that held and nourished and protected by your word, we may live as your children. Bear your goodness throughout the world for your powerful word. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor to grant and give you peace, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is hymn number 290 in the ELW. <laughs> 